I'm Joe Eichley, Extension Weed Specialist at North Dakota State University. Today I just want to briefly talk about the importance of genetic tests for herbicide resistance. So this project we're looking at herbicide resistance in water hemp and palmer amaranth. So if you have those two pigweeds, we can quickly get results back to you for resistance to glyphosate, group 2 herbicides, and group 14 herbicides. If you want herbicide resistance in other pigweeds, such as redroot pigweed, we can only test for group 2 herbicides, but again, it can get a pretty rapid result back to you. Uh, so when it comes to pigweed ID, we always look towards the top of the stem and look for the presence or absence of hairs. So when we have hairs on the stem, that means that's going to be something like redroot pigweed or pal amaranth, and those are the types of pigweeds we can only test for group 2 herbicide resistance. If you don't have hairs at the top of the stem, that means you have water hemp or you have palmer amaranth, and those two weeds we can conduct uh, resistance testing for glyphosate, group 2 herbicides, and the group 14 herbicides. And I just wanted to show that on weeds as, as small as 1 to 3 inches, these are two water hemp plants here, uh, 1 to 3 inches tall, also lacking the hairs at the top of the stem. If this was a, a redroot pigweed, we would see hairs at this stage of development. So as these pigweeds continue to evolve resistance to different herbicides, these are some very important ones that we use in soybean production, and this is why we really want to test for resistance, and you can have an immediate answer of, of what you're working with in your field. We are also looking at a pilot program for testing resistance in kochia. So if you send in kochia samples, we may not get results back immediately this year, but we will uh, work on developing tests for a, a multitude of different herbicide resistance for use in future years.